The Risk Sharing Finance Facility aims to improve access to finance for research, for development and for innovation and this is a top priority for the European Union's Europe 2020 strategy. This is the first time that there is a true joint instrument funded and managed by both the European Commission and the European Investment Bank. We put together 1 billion coming from the EU budget, 1 billion coming from EIB's own resources. This creates a provision of 2 billion with a leverage effect of at least 1 to 5. This means that we can lend more than 10 billion euro for research projects which do not meet our usual banking criteria, but nevertheless, which can be very important for our future. The Risk Sharing Finance Facility helps turn good ideas into reality. Investing in innovation means that we will have growth, we will have sustainability, um, we will have competitiveness in Europe, which we badly need, and that we will eventually have a single uh, innovation union. The RSSF has already funded a number of important projects in key areas, for example, in renewable energy, in healthcare, and in reduction of CO2 emissions. One of the first loans made through the Risk Sharing Finance Facility was to AVL. This is a medium-sized family-owned company based in Austria. AVL facilitates innovation in the automotive industry and is a leader in the development of car engines that produce less pollution and use less petrol. AVL are also researching hydrogen fuel cell technology. The results of this work will have a big impact on climate change and the environment. Well, it's open to everybody, whether you're a small business, a large company, a public sector organisation, a research centre or a research infrastructure. For the small enterprises, we go through intermediaries. For bigger corporates, we can finance them directly. For example, in the field of satellite communication, we can finance very big projects through RSFF. Another way that the risk sharing finance facility can be very useful is in the area of information and communications infrastructure. This is a highly strategic sector for improving EU competitiveness. Inmarsat is a private company based in London that provides satellites communication systems that connect users anywhere in the world. Mobility, that is what differentiates us with respect to our competitors. If you go into a war zone or a disaster zone, you want to be able to communicate with your home base, you just open the terminal and you use it. The AlphaSat is an exciting new satellite system that will cover the whole of Europe and previously remote areas of Africa and the Middle East. It will be able to deal with the rapidly increasing demand for voice and internet services and push the European satellite industry to the leading position in this sector. Life sciences are also an important sector for the risk-sharing finance facility. Healthcare in Europe faces major challenges. Investing in R&D for healthcare can take years to become successful. Diabetes is a growing problem in many countries and a huge area of expenditure in public health. Here in Poland, loans from the RSFF are helping Metacure, a small medical technology company, to develop the Tantalus system for diabetes and overweight patients. An implanted device that allows them to control their sugar levels without insulin. Tantalus is a uh, type of gastric stimulator, very specific proprietary technology. We ask the patient not to change their lifestyle, just to listen to your brain. And the device will help you to be, to be healthy. Research, development and innovation in sustainable energy is crucial. It's also a very challenging area because the startup costs are high. At Andesol in southern Spain, a new process is being developed. Heat from the sun is converted into energy through molten salt in tubes and that allows the plant to carry on generating electricity after the sun has gone down. 
investing in innovative technologies like those being pioneered at Andersol gives the EU a competitive advantage in a very important commercial sector of the future and reduces CO2 emissions. The RSFF is used in a very strategic way. Here in the Netherlands, we see the effect of the synergy created between different organisations in one place. The high-tech campus in Eindhoven was started by Philips but is now an ecosystem of more than 7,000 researchers, developers and entrepreneurs working in an open innovation framework, which means collaborating on ideas and projects and sharing in the rewards. In Eindhoven you have various large multinationals like Philips, ASML, Daf Pakar, Campina. So the combination of small and large companies in one environment is much more powerful than either the small or the big companies. For that ecosystem to exist, you need finance for the buildings, for the facilities, for the activities, the projects. That gives a complete ecosystem of, of people that uh, contribute in one form or another. Well, it's a very long term and a very high risk game. The return on the net cost every year is about a factor five. So it's extremely profitable, but we fail 90% of the time. And that means you have to organize yourself for failure. And for that you need to do risk management. And for that you need special financial partners who are willing to take that risk. When we finance research in life science, in information and communication technologies, in renewable energies, these are very important for all European citizens. Europe can keep its place in this economic world only if we are on the edge in some areas. A Europe of zero risk would be a Europe of zero innovation. Our competitiveness and our sustainable prosperity depend on innovation. The partnership between the European Commission and the European Investment Bank has already made the RSSF a success story and what we need to do now is to make the RSSF an even better instrument. Mm -hmm.